know, it was, it was very refreshing and uh, it's good to see a collection of Nigerians, entrepreneurs with different backgrounds coming together in an environment, you know, not just of learning but of sharing experience. And I also believe that I, you know, you spoke to our country. My sense, uh, as you will recall, when I was speaking to them, I said, when we are asked how is the country doing, how they're doing is an important part of how the country is doing. And my sense is that the experience they're going through is an investment that will be a fruit in the future. And that's why one more gets the opportunity to you know, both invest in them and also to share experiences with them. I view it as a, an important opportunity uh, to make the most of because frankly, that interaction you learn, you also understand. When you know people ask you questions, you learn from their questions. And, and how would you describe your interaction with the delegates? I know you, you said some just now, but what I wanted to bring out really is the message of hope. If you see dark is dark, if you see... Uh, how, how would you describe that interaction? First, I thought it was... I thought it was both refreshing and sincere. I mean, they were good luck. I mean, there were times when I had to uh, try to encourage them because uh, the sense I got was that they liked what they saw and what they heard. Uh, they simply said that we should communicate more. They simply felt that we should engage more and they wanted to see more sustainability and more impact and impact to you know, feed through, you know, to feel that through, to come through you know, to the masses. And I, and I encourage them, frankly, you know, that not to do so in the sense that you know, there's something called the power of compound interest. That, you know, and you, you use the term geometric progression or geometric uh, 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 growth, growth. You know, that what you will tend to find is that if you keep doing the right thing, you will definitely get a result. And therefore, the commitment is to keep doing the right thing and also working together in harmony and in partnership to get those results. What was the motivation for you in this time that tight schedule to come? I think for me, first and foremost, um, as a, both a personal value and passion, I like, I, like, I, like, I like giving back. And I believe that what you, Austin Kerry, is doing is giving back. And like I said to you when we started, you know, I challenge myself to say if Austin is giving back and asked me to come and join him, you know, would it be a good excuse to tell him I'm too busy to come? And I felt that I probably should make the time. And you were also generous enough to work with us to find the right time. The second thing to say is also that like in terms of engagement, it's also part of my work. Engaging these people and them hearing our story as you have today is an important part of governance, an important part of the role of government in spreading, you know, um, um, and the message of what we're doing and getting the buy-in of the people. Without hope, we cannot succeed. Thank you for making this time. Bill Gates, um, one of the most significant technology uh, personalities when he, uh, during his recent visit to Nigeria, he stressed the importance of human capital development as a pillar of economic growth. How do you see this assertion in the Nigerian context? I think the first thing is to say we agree with Bill Gates. If you look at the economic recovery and growth which is our central and main sort of economic um, agenda and plan, you know, the, at the heart of it, you know, it has three objectives. At the heart of those three objectives, it has the objective of growth, economic growth and diversified and inclusive growth. And then it has invested in our people, which was exactly what Bill Gates was talking about. They talked about creating a competitive economy. And so I think it's really to make sure that we free up enough resources to do that. That's what it was really after. And we agree with it. In other words, we need to make sure that other areas which make the private sector can take up or other people can take up that is crowding out some of our social investments in healthcare, in education, in social intervention for us that deal with the most vulnerable in society that we address those. And it's a journey. We can't do it in one day. But we, we, we certainly agree with him. So while we invited him and his partner in the country as well. Um, the first thing I would say is that we agree with you that by enabling and supporting the micro, small and medium enterprises, we are actually creating jobs directly and indirectly. We are also um, creating growth, economic growth. In other words, we are fulfilling the plan, the, the economic recovery and growth plan and our vision, the broad vision as a country and as a government. You know, what are we doing about it? I will just give you a few uh, examples. One is that we think by focusing on the enabling environment, and making it easier to do business, that the SMEs or MSMEs benefit disproportionately. In other words, when it is tough to do business, they suffer more than the large businesses who tend to have resources to you know, just address those obstacles. So we are very committed. I would even say, you know, I was going to one extremely committed. We are you know, very, very committed to trying to make it easier for SMEs to do business and for everybody else to do business. In fact, World Bank Rankings, as you know, is focused on the SMEs. 
Secondly, building infrastructure as well, because the world you know, is also makes it easier for them because they can't build their own infrastructure. Railway, power, roads. But doing that financing, I told you that the Bank of Industry recently raised um, over 250 billion naira to add to their funding to make more funding available. The central bank and others. So we're focused on how do we make it easier. If you talk to SMEs, there are three or four areas that are their top priorities. One is access to financing. Two is access to sort of training and capacity building, and access to customers and all the other sort of stakeholders that they work with, just making it easier for them. And then of course, in all those areas, the ease of use and the environment, so making it easier for them to do business. And all those things we are tackling using different interventions through different agencies. And I believe that like what you will find is that ultimately this multiply effect you talked about, where by freeing up the SMEs to succeed, we'll kick in. One last point I should mention that we have this. MSME clinics, which is some of the vice president leads going from state to state to basically take the services of the agencies, you know, like Federal Inland Revenue Services, FES, you know, CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, and so on and so forth. Now that you talk about uh, the mechanisms that are built to help them, I mean, Bank of Industry is one you talk about. There's also Sweden, uh, which is set up by government to help. Uh, and how would you assess the impact of these? Are they making an impact? Uh, the 250 billion is not, but How is it making the impact? I think the thing about impact is that it's not a destination, it's, it's something that has to continue. We are not where we used to be, but we're not where we want to be. So, my view is that, like, we met some impact as in this thing. More importantly, we've also set up the structures, like you said, that can multiply over time by recapitalizing POI, by basically getting spread and uh, to have more capacity you know, to. Intervene, including the industrial development centers and other things that we're under their chair, which we are innovating. By working with the industrial training fund to train them, by using the social intervention funds you know, to build capacity, you know, whether it's things like um, empower initiatives or you know, things like the GIP, which is government um, entrepreneurship and empowerment initiatives. <coughs> All those things are adding to SMEs. You know, obviously, the, the, the results will show over time, and the results are starting to come in. I shared some of the results with you today in class. You did. In fact, it's widely commended the impact of the EGRP, the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. And I think the major issue you shared it with us, but also with the louder, the bigger audience there, how do you intend to sustain the momentum of this laudable initiative and what will be the next phase? I think the first thing is to, you know, to make the point that the reason that we made the plan, we made it a plan that would go up to 2020 is to recognize that we have to transcend one government. Um, the reason why we want a partnership with the private sector, and you gave us good advice today to increase our competition and engagement, is that they will always be there. The reason why it's also a plan between, not just um, a plan of the federal government, but in collaboration with the states, in collaboration with the other arms of government, is to make sure that it's collectively owned. And I would say, finally, that we are also trying to make sure that many of the initiatives, they are enabling legislation and laws that we passed to support them. We are told this for example, the Omnibus Bill, and this with enabling environment and ease of doing business. You know, um, the uh, Senate and National Assembly is trying to pass a bill on Corporate Affairs Commission to make it easier to register companies. So we're trying to use enabling legislation. We are also trying to make sure that through the principle of partnership, that these plans will transcend any one administration. Fantastic. This is lovely to hear. And I think in, clo in closing, we we want to congratulate you as an ALA champion, having come to share your experience with a champion. And then uh, we we'll talk about engagement. Uh, your insights have provided a robust perspective on the nexus between uh, business and public service. And um, I think the question is in creating this uh, oasis of champions and oasis of entrepreneurs, could the champions and business entrepreneurs through this medium of ALA? Uh, call on you when we have suggestions for enhancing the enabling environment? Absolutely, and I said to in class publicly, right, that it's important to also view this as uh, an opportunity to meet, to get to know each other, and therefore to work together for the collective interest of our country, and our businesses, and our stakeholders. Which means that, like, both through ALA itself, championed by yourself, as well as um, through my staff, you've now met, that we should, you know, maintain some communication and certainly, please, if you have any suggestions or anything we need to do better, or anything where you need to access government through us, we are there. We tell people that we are the Ministry of Enabling Environment for Industry, Trade and Investment. We want to be known 
as a regular. I think you almost diminish it if you just reduce to one year in school. You want the entire government and the legacy of service, you know, the, the, the commitment, the social contract that we have with Nigeria and Nigeria as a stakeholder to be that we provide, we facilitate, we help to create that enabling environment for businesses to prosper, for industry, for trade and for investment. And the last question, um, would you recommend the Oslo Leadership Academy for the entrepreneurs and business leaders out there based on what you have seen today? Absolutely. Uh, like I told you first, I've known you for many years, Austin O'Kerry, and my view is that like, you know, you are somebody who has succeeded at what you are now, you know, teaching others to do as a specialist and as well as, um, you know, playing this uh, post and sponsorship role. And I have also seen from the class that you are consuming your own thing, I saw you from CWG there. And, you know, so every sign I saw, and encourage me to believe that this is going to be a much bigger success than you even know. And please know that I'm going to be making recommendations as, um, as we go forward. Thank, Thank you very, very much, Honorable Minister, for coming to inspire the delegates and also your support to the Oswego Thank you. Thank very you very much, Oscar. Thank you. My pleasure.